supertalk.fm. We're also streaming from that Supertalk Mississippi app. Hope you've downloaded that. You can always find us, too, on your local Supertalk Mississippi radio station. And don't forget about watching us. You can do that on your computer or your mobile device. Just head on over to Super Talk TV. And today we're going to catch up with one of our previous Good Things guests, Mr. Ed Abdella. He's a teacher at, at West Lauderdale, but he's also gearing up to race across America. We have been following his story for, oh, Ed, how long have we been following your story? Several months, I know, maybe a year now? Yeah, it's been a year since uh, the bike around Mississippi that we did last summer. So welcome back. And you. you are about a month out from Race Across America. It's June what? June 11th. We're 38 days out. And how are we feeling, Ed? Pretty nervous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pretty so, nervous. so there's a chance that someone's hearing about your story for the first time here on Good Things, Ed. So let's kind of go back to maybe the beginning when you first got inspired to set this great goal to race across America. And that's that's a cycling race. Yeah, it's uh, the world's toughest race. And it was started in 1982 uh, by a handful of guys from California and Colorado and uh, they chose to cross over this magnificent country of ours by um, going through three deserts and three mountain ranges and uh, the winds of Kansas and, you know, and uh, going from coast to coast. So we will start, um, for me, it started well, six years ago. Um, I've been, uh, I have seen some videos on this race across America and it just intrigued me to uh, want to do something like this. And uh, that's what started it. So I started training pretty hard, and we, we've done a bunch of races. We've done a bunch of qualifying races. One of the qualifiers was the Natchez Race 444, which we completed three times and uh, in the past. And um, we did 444 miles the last time in 27 hours. So I became a, a RAM qualifier. Um, you had to do it in 44 hours, but I became a RAM qualifier on all three of them, and um, we trained with the bike around Mississippi. We did 1,156 miles, and I did it in four days, three hours, and 16 minutes, and it gave us a bird's eye view of exactly what, you know, scientifically what I would need for this race and, um, you know, what cost us time. And time is so, so precious because you only have 12 days. So the race is... So it's 3,071 miles. You have 12 days to complete it. You have about 175,000 vertical feet that you have to climb. You go through 15 states, three deserts, four of America's longest rivers, the Colorado, the Mississippi, the Missouri, and the Ohio. And then, of course, uh, the, the three mountain ranges, which are the Sierra, Nevada, the Rocky Mountains. And, of course, you end with the Appalachians. And uh, then you'll finally make it to... Uh, Atlantic City, New Jersey, which is different from when we talked last. They used to have it at Annapolis, Maryland, but they had to change that. Uh, Annapolis is going to be working on their boardwalk, and so we're going to Atlantic City, which was the original finish point. But, um, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, we have a great cause that we're riding for. I'm riding for Hope Village for Children here in, their, in Mississippi, Meridian, and um, we're hoping to, by the time we're done, we're hoping to raise a million dollars. That's so, incredible. And you've already raised great amount of money for other causes throughout Mississippi. Remind yes, us the historic ma'am. building that's near and dear to your heart there in Meridian that you also helped bring awareness to. Yeah, we did. We The, the bike around Mississippi, we, we raised a little over 12, I think it was closer to $13,000 for Mary Hope. Um, and uh, then every year I do something for the West Lauderdale High School Band. I do what's called the 24-hour challenge where I ride for 24 hours. And um, we did 371 miles uh, this la- this past December, and raised. I think he said we raised close to eight grand, which is good because the band, you know, they're mm-hmm. they're great kids, and I, I love those guys. And I told them as long as I'm able, I'll do it every year. So, what know. do your what do your students think about um, all of your cycling, Ed? Because I know, like many of them, that is something that you can at least relate to. I'm sure most of them have been on a bike before or yeah. bike around still, maybe not in high school or as much. But, you know, they kind of understand what it's like to be on a bike. And to think about going 3,000 miles or to bike around Mississippi, do they think you're the teacher that's nuts? Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, I think everybody that I talk to thinks that this isn't insane. You know, they're like, come on, I wouldn't even drive that far. And, uh, 
you know, but when they, you know, the kids here, you know, because they're so accustomed to seeing me, I'm, you know, I'm riding to school and then I ride back home and I'm training on Saturdays and Sundays and they usually see me on the road. So it's gotten to the point where they're like, well, this is, this is really happening. And, you know, um, this is pretty cool, you know, and, and the fact I'm pretty old, you know, I'm 59 years old. So I'll be, I'm just months away from my 60th birthday. So, um, but they, um, a couple of weeks, it was kind of funny. A couple of weeks ago, we had a little bit of downtime because we had some stuff going on for, uh, we were in a school and we celebrated our a school with uh, a little bit of a party. And so, um, we came back to class for about 30 minutes and, uh, they said, are we doing anything today? I said, well, we only got 30 minutes. I said, however, we'll, you know, we can you know, do whatever. And they said, Hey, talk to us about this race. And I showed them a video. And it was a video of a guy that didn't finish Ram. And it was kind of the wrong video for me to watch because it made me extremely melancholy. And, uh, I, you know, it's every one of us have has a, somewhat of a documentary we're putting together. Like I have Anna Hover from Magnolia Mouth Media, and she's been with me for a year now. And she's been documenting my training process. And she'll put it all together and make one of these, you know, videos as well. But, um, you know, when I turned it off and started looking at the students, they were just like, you're really going to do this? And I said, yeah. I said, man, what happens if you end up like this guy? I said, I'm going to be crying and apologizing to my crew because they've wasted, you know, they, you know my, I've got 10 people on my crew. And they have dedicated so much time to this and so much, you know, they're, by the time we're done with all of it, driving out to California, then driving back to Mississippi from Atlantic City, they would have spent 17 days in a van eating terrible food from gas stations. And, you know, and most of my crew, they're 50 and older. I have three that are younger. I have one 25-year-old, I have a 20-year-old, and I have a a 21 year old that'll be with me on the crew. And they're the youngest ones. The uh, next, the closest one is 48 and that's Anna Hover and the rest of us are 50. So I'm asking them to go on. I mean, just think about you sitting in a van for, you know, all that time. Now they'll be doing six hour shifts, but that's still a lot of time and I'm indebted to them, but I, I don't want to be able, I don't want to be the person that have to hug on them and say, I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm sorry. I couldn't make it, but we're going to give it our college try. And, you know, I've done enough training. I think I'm prepared. My legs are, are ready for it. I've got a strong heart. Um, I think mentally I'll be okay. My military background hopefully will kick in and, you know. I think you're going to do just fine, Ed, and regardless of the outcome. I mean, man, the, these type of adventures, it's an adventure. It's a journey, right? Like it's not oh, about absolutely. the end result so much as it's just about all the, the things you've accomplished along the way with your team, which is what I was going to ask. You kept saying, we won this, we did that. You know, yes, you're on the bike, but it's a crew that sort of makes sure you do that safely and then are able to sort of accomplish it. Have you had the same 10 this whole time or is is there anyone that's been there since the beginning with you oh absolutely i have i have four of them that have been with me ever since the first time i talked about the uh natchez trace 444 and so they're you know they're the old heads and we have meetings every two weeks we have zoom meetings because some of my crew is from out of town and uh, my crew chief for instance is my best friend i've known him for 40 something years and we raced together as uh, when we were younger and teenagers and his name is Kevin Brooker and he's, you know, he'll be my crew chief. He's from Vermont and his wife is actually going to be my nurse. Um, and we're friends too. We've known each other for 30 something years, but uh, yeah, that that's kind of a, you know, I have a handful of them that have been with me the whole time and, you know, we get together and we talk about, okay, so let's, let's see what worked and what didn't work. Um, you know, that was kind of the big thing. And Kevin's a stickler for time. We're talking about not getting off the bike, even like, for instance. Hey, hold um, that thought, Ed. Can you stick with yes, us? Sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I can. 
All righty, we've got more with Abdella, Ed Abdella, who is racing across America in June. Coming up next, app. You can always find us too on your local Super Talk Mississippi radio station. And don't forget about watching us. You can do that on Super Talk TV on your computer or your mobile device. Continuing our conversation with Ed Abdella. He is a teacher at West Lauderdale High School, and he's on a mission to complete the 3,000 miles from Oceanside, California to Atlantic City, New Jersey, to complete one of the world's toughest races, and that is race across America in. 38 days, right, Ed? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> do you yes, have ma'am. it, like, counting down somewhere? Do you have a calendar where you're marking off the days? Do you I have... do. I sure do. We, we leave on June 6th. But, uh, yeah, we're, you know, everybody's excited. I, I'm, I am excited, but, you know, same, same essence. I'm, you know, a little worried, a little concerned. A lot, there's a lot, yeah, it is a journey for me. And there's a lot of stuff that, uh, you know, there's a lot of reasons why I do, you know, the endurance cycling, a lot of it's got to do with my military background and ways to use it as therapy. And, um, in fact, I have a, a great supporter in the Veterans of Foreign Wars. I'm actually wearing their logo on my uh, race kit and putting them on, uh, you know, all of our all of our vans. And hopefully I'll be able to come across some of these. We've reached out to a lot of the VFW posts in the states that we're crossing, and hopefully they'll come out to some of the time stations and you know visit with one of their one of their members you know me but uh yeah we were talking about like um you know what what we do to make this um better and and not waste any time one of the things was we have communication set up between me and and the in the van and anytime i need something just say i need one more you know it's 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 i need lip balm or i need um a different pair of sunglasses what I would normally do is I'd stop, get off the bike, go in the van, get my shades, get my sun bomb, you know, bomb, and then probably stop and get something to eat or something to do. And that's like 10 minutes. And you're like, oh, that's not a big deal, especially when you're riding consecutively for 22 and 23 hours a day. It is everything. I call back and tell them I need my lip balm and I need my sunglasses, the POC ones or whatever. And when I when they call me back and say, okay, we're going to stop at this area and we're ready, I don't even have to get off the bike. I literally just straddle the bike, put that stuff on, and then go. And it's like maybe a minute. And that's the way you save time. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of, you know, that's one of the biggest things. I've got to average, in order to finish this race, I have to average uh, 280 miles a day. And I have to do that for 12 days, which means not a lot of sleep because mm-hmm. some of the areas that I'll be riding are going to be mountainous and it's going to take me longer to get through those. So the days that I can put in 300 or 350 miles, I need to, to cover for the guy for the days that I'm only going to get 200 or 220, you know? So how like, many so riders be, Ed will show up to the start okay. line? Yep. All right. So as far as teams go, they have teams of, of two, four, six, and eight. There's a ton of them. But I'm glad you asked that. So there are 38 male soloists, and of the 38, only six of us are from the United States. Most of them are from Europe. The rest of them are from other parts of the world, and a lot of them are pro riders. There are 16 females, in which only four are from the United States. So there's a total of 44 of us that are soloists. And unfortunately, depending on how hot it is in the desert, Anywhere from 52% won't make it to as high as 60, depending on what the weather's like in the desert. Usually the desert pretty much hits, you know, hurts a lot of folks. Um, you know, this year we've been, we've been monitoring the weather, and we've been looking at what it's supposed to be. And we're hoping for the same weather that was last year because they had it was very mild. It was about 198 to 100 degrees in the day, but it was about 70 at night, and that's wonderful. That is nice. Yeah, but the year before, by 10 o'clock, it was 130 degrees, and that's what gobbled a lot of the folks up. They got, you know. You've been doing a lot of our last summer. I hope you took advantage of our extraordinarily hot stretch and just got out there and rode your little heart out. I did. We did. We had a good time. That that bike around Mississippi was a lot of fun. But again, it, it taught us a lot. And I've got a lot of great. I've got a lot of great sponsors that have helped me. I've got, 
people like Formula 369 is, a, is kind of a newer company with this really good electrolyte type uh, mix and, and carbohydrates and protein mix. And I'm using them, and they actually are sponsoring me, which is really good. Um, <clears throat> I have a whole bunch of sponsors in, in Meridian <clears throat> that have helped me with the cost of this race. This race is, so far, it's close to without my bikes or any of the stuff that I purchased for my bikes, just for us to get to California, cross over the country, and then get back to Atlanta. It is about $35,000. That's an investment. Yeah, you can say that. That's why it's extremely important that uh, we finish this thing and do it right, and and you know finish it for Mississippi. Where, you know, I'm the first one to to ever sign up from Mississippi. So this is kind of a, you know, this is a big deal. And you know, a lot of the bike shops in in the area reached out to me and. Um, some of them, like bike crossing in Ridgeland, has been wonderful. You know, Scott Coppersmith is a pro rider out there, and Daniel is my the guy that fitted me on the bike. They they have just helped me out immensely. Um, anytime I needed something, they were there. Johnny on the spot, like they I had problems with some zip wheels, and uh, they fixed them for me. When you know this, the company's kind of going through some turmoil right now, and. I couldn't get parts, and they said, let, let me take a look at it. And they had spare parts, and they said, you know, we got them. We're just going to put them on. And I'm like, well, well I'll buy it. No, 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 we don't, we're not going to charge you because we, we want to help you. And, you know, that's the way most people have been. So we're, we're super excited. And, and know, when did you a, get your first bicycle? Okay, so I was <laughs> – this great story. So – a bunch of my older friends were riding, and they were all doing these races. And I told my dad I wanted to ride, and and he was like, I was fourteen, and he's like, no. I said, Dad, I want a racing bike. I don't want this old bike. I want a racing bike. I want a Peugeot. And and he kept saying, Look, I tell you what, you show me that you're really serious, and I will take you out one Saturday. And we'll get a Peugeot. Now those were pretty top of the line bikes at the time. So I'll never forget, I took my little huffy out, and I rode to Massachusetts, the, the state border. I don't even know how far it was. This is before we had cat eyes and, you know, all these other gizmos that tell you how many miles you go or Garmin. And so here I am, this 14-year-old kid, and I literally got on the bike and just rode all the way to the state border of Massachusetts and all the way back. And by the time I got back, my father had come back from, from work, and uh, my mom told him that I was riding to Massachusetts and back. And I came back, and that Saturday we got up, and I got a Peugeot, and I started racing that, and then it, it turned into the Italian Bianchis, and I've been riding Bianchi ever since. So all my bikes are Bianchis. I got 14, just purchased one about a week ago. Where do you put them? That's not like shoes have, where you can put them in a closet. Yeah. No, I have a beautiful room that's set up, and they're all hanging on the wall, and I've got a stand that I could work on. and. You know, yeah, I know. It's like, why do you have to have so many bikes? And I asked the guy that does a lot of hunting, I said, how many rifles do you have? He goes, what, what does that got to do with it? I said, how many rifles? He goes, I got a few. I said, well, there you have it. Why don't you sell one of your rifles? Oh, I can't do that. And I said, well, I can't sell one of my bikes. It's the same purpose. It's just yeah. like the same thing. You know, I just, you know. I enjoy well, Ed, is there going to be a way that we can keep up with your travels and with your, I know, um, you know, you're going to have your head down for, for 12 days and to finish it, but we would love to be able to see how you're progressing. Sure. So, you know, and um, you can always call us back. You, you can do that if you want while I'm on the road. I'd love to chat with you guys while I'm somewhere. Um, so we'll, we'll make contact through messaging, but they can follow us at, ram, you know, www.raamrace.org. And they have everything on there. They'll, they, they'll, and they're really good. Um, you can go to to the videos they have. They'll be videoing us every day. They'll catch up with us and they'll put a little snippet about you know each each and every rider. Uh, but do you have you like know. a team name, Ed, or is it just by your name? No, we're ra it's Race for Hope. Okay. We're racing, yeah, we're racing for Hope Village. So it's Race for Hope, and, and I am the flying freight train, which <laughs> another another uh, problem of, I don't call it a problem anymore, I can't, but I am probably going to be one of the heaviest riders out there. I'm 227 pounds, 
So well, you'll I'm have plenty of fuel longer. to spare as you go yeah, on your exactly. long endurance race. Well, Ed, we are cheering you on from home. We will definitely keep up with you. Look forward to checking in with you as you're on your journey to race across America. And we're rooting for you, buddy. Thank you. And please support Hope for Village. These are our children. And people need to know these are our kids from Mississippi, all 82 counties. And they are truly gifts that we have. And I, I'm so blessed to be able to to ride for them. So keep them in, 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 in your prayers as well. But thank you so much for having me. And we'll reach out later and, and chat. All right. We'll catch up soon. You. All right. Best of luck, Ed. You guys stick with us. It's Friday. We got movies coming up next with Tanya.